Welcome everyone, Marcelo is my name. Awesome to have your company and awesome to be able to experience this together, the Kajal Discovery Series. Now there's two ways to enjoy this media. One, just keep watching or, and this is what I would encourage and invite you to do, go to the Kajal website and order your own discovery set. Click here. Go here, use the code NFC for a 10% discount. Now, you're gonna to wanna to boot back onto this particular episode, and the way you do that is by clicking here, save it here, and when your discovery set arrives, boot back to this video and we can begin together. Now, I'm gonna assume that you do have your discovery set, and it's gonna give me a chance to test out different fragrances alongside you in real time. I invite you to even talk to the screen. I'm gonna ask you some questions, so go ahead and answer them as if I'm in the room with you. I do want you to put your fragrances in a particular order, and we're gonna follow the Michael Edwards fragrance wheel. We'll start off with Ferris as our number one, then we'll move across to Almaz, then Lamar, followed by Dahab, and finally Massa. I am gonna ask you to spray two or three fragrances on your skin, so if you can leave a little bit of real estate. Other than that, 300 GSM pieces of paper or blotter cards would be ideal to spray on too. Who is Kajal? So let's start here. The brand is owned by a gentleman by the name of Mo Khalaf. Now, his surname is spelled with a KH, and that KH creates the Kh sound. Originally, Mo was going to name the brand Kajal. Now the word Khajal means to be humble, to be modest, but it also means to have goodness and to give to others. He discovered very quickly that a lot of people were struggling to pronounce the H sound in Khajal, so he dropped that H and now made it Khajal. But the, the core essence, the, the, the soul of the brand is still in line with Khajal, which is about goodness, which is about giving. It's an abundance mentality. That's the core of it. Very early on, I had an opportunity to actually interview Mo. Here are the episodes if you'd like to see that in more detail. And in that conversation, he talked about where a lot of the inspiration came for the different fragrances. Mo instills a lot of his creativity and passion, and you can see that across the brand. The eight-point star is the classic lid of the Kajal range. And in a lot of cultures, it's a symbol of optimism, it's lucky, and also represents eternity. The name Khajal or Kajal is all about optimism. It's about abundance. And it's Mo giving to all of us such incredible range of fragrances to enjoy. The one thing that is classic with the Kajal range is that it is French perfumery, but it celebrates a Middle Eastern style. You'll note that there are some beautiful spicy notes within the fragrances. Now, just to give you an idea, this is not the complete range. There is the Wadi de range, which is now a celebration of different florals, but with a very Middle Eastern twist. And then there's the Fitter range, beautiful masculine fragrances also with a very interesting Middle Eastern twist. Let's begin. I'd love you to grab your Faris sample, spray this. For the boys out there, this is gorgeous for any man to wear. 15 to 65, this transcends any age. Anyone who wants to have a beautiful, confident, masculine fragrance, Ferris hits the spot. What are you getting? I love the opening of this. This is one of those fragrances that on first spray, you're like, okay, you sign me up, I'm ready. <laughs> Put it on my tab. I love also the fact that as the fragrance migrates, and again, if you're comfortable to put it on skin, this is one that the evolution is divine. I find that when this fragrance opens up, it has a beautiful Mediterranean sunrise, and I'll tell you more about that. It then migrates to these beautiful, vibrant herbal notes, and finally settles into the spicy, woody, aromatic, masculine, confident place. It's in the dry down. This fragrance takes you on a different route. It begins with a familiarity, but it's those beautiful spicy woods that goes into its own unique place that makes this fragrance quite spectacular. It does follow a classic fougere lineup. Lavender, aromatic notes on that opening, herbal-like. Then in the heart, there are some beautiful florals, jasmine, rose. Finally, in the base, you have things like oak moss and vetiver, the more woodier tone, but it's the spices that actually pop through. On cart, I don't detect the spices so much, but on skin, the coriander, the clove, that nutmeg, awesome. And as I said, on that opening, it does take you for a bit of a ride. On that opening, it's 
beautiful and vibrant and herbal and aromatic and uplift. Finally, in that base, you're getting this beautiful, spicy, woody fragrance that is quite unique. And also I find that it actually works differently on different people. When I first experienced this, it took me to a place. I mentioned earlier that I see a Mediterranean sunrise on that opening. I had an opportunity to travel to Sicily. We stayed in a town called Taormina. It's on a cliff. So we would go jogging of a morning through a garden. Now in this garden, there were a lot of herbal notes. I know it because I picked them all like rosemary and thyme, lavender, the ocean was right there. This is the photo. This is my experience of this fragrance. When it opens, it's a combination of this marine lag. I can see the ocean, definitely feeling sunshine. I'm in a herbal garden. I'm having these, these beautiful aromatics are all around me. I find that Ferris is a beautiful statement maker. Whenever I'm wearing it, my wife instantly detects it. For me, the sillage on this is a very confident, moderate, and also it's projection in that moderate phase. 10 plus hours, stays on skin beautifully. Recently, one of my editors, as I was testing, smelt this in the air. We have a thing on the channel called, mm, baby, what's your name? And the essence of it is, what kind of fragrances make you, when you smell them, turn your head and go, mm, what is your name? Her comment was, mm, this is a, mm, baby, what's your name kind of fragrance? And I'd have to agree. Gorgeous fragrance, beautifully masculine, wonderfully aromatic. Now. Did you put that on skin? If you did, that's all good, because I want you to compare it to this one here. This is Almas. Now, I would like you to put this one on skin. This is one of my favorites in the collection. I know you think I have no favorite because they're all my favorite, but I love wearing this one. This one here, I was wearing it one day. I woke up in the morning. Now, I know this sounds like a story, but I promise that it's all true. The sun was coming through the window. I just woke up, actually I beat my alarm and I'm lying in bed sort of getting my senses together and I'm thinking to myself, why do I feel so happy? And, I'm, and I remember thinking like, why do I feel happy? And I'm like, did I have a good dream? I had a good sleep, but I feel a sense of peace and joy. And then slowly, slowly my nose activated or my brain activated because my nose was already well, well aware of what was going on. It was Almas. I had been wearing it the day before. It was still on my skin. I was now enveloped in this beautiful Almas scent profile, this beautiful peachy, musky, creamy tones, and it brought a smile to my face. I, I thought to myself, when I do the discovery series, I must make sure to share this because this is a fragrance that brings peace and calm to my soul but in a different way. Normally I like woody fragrances. They tend to sort of lower my vibrations, make me feel more at peace. But somehow Almas creates this, this calmness, creates this happiness in me. So I look, again, I go back, put it on skin. I, I invite you to put Almas on skin. Yes, on card is great, but I feel that by putting it on skin, you're gonna get the full effect of this particular fragrance. I should have said this at the beginning, don't look at notes. I would like you to think, what are you detecting as you smell this? I get a combination of fruit notes. For me, I get this tropical lushness about it. Things like mango, things like a passion fruit. Things like a, like a mandarin, a juicy mandarin. I love that, actually, just then a raspberry. I love that on opening, beautiful bergamot, black currant, then in the heart it has raspberry. These three fruit notes create this cornucopia, this abundance of uh, tropical fruits all coming forward. And the beauty of the fragrance is that it always stays there. Yes, they're there in abundance on that opening, but it never goes away. As I mentioned, when I was lying in bed, waking up that one morning, I could detect these luscious fruit notes, but it has this beautiful, creamy, almost vanilla tone through it. Almost, almost luxurious or musky, or there's a, there's a, a range of different sort of uh, a smoothness, a custard, a velvet, all right, put it on skin. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on skin. This is one that needs to be experienced for real. On skin, that raspberry pops, but I still get that peach-like component to it. I've discovered that I really love fruity fragrances. I enjoy the, 
they they bring a sense of happiness to me. It's um and sometimes some fruity fragrances are over the top, can be a little bit on the very young girl. <laughs> I'm not a young girl, as you can tell. I also know that a lot of people say that Almas is a little bit more feminine leaning, which is true, that musky tone, the fruity elements to it, the vanilla touch to it. However, boys do not shy away. So again, if you're experiencing this alongside me with your discovery set, put this on skin, put it on skin, see how this works. I promise you, you'll get nothing but compliments. You'll get nothing but yummy sounds from those people around you. The fruit tones are not over the top. They're not uh, exaggerated, as I mentioned, too girly-like. There is a subtleness in the fragrance because of the base note. There are wood notes, there's heliotrope, there are musky tones, there is vanilla, and there is a brown sugar accord. All these things just work beautifully. Again, beautiful on a woman, but on a man, and especially with that musk, and I find that that when there is a musk in the fragrance, or and it's not an animalic musk, it's more of a white musk or a, a synthetic musk. When there is that musk in the base, for me, I see my body seems to amplify it a little bit more and give it a bit more of a masculine edge. Gorgeous fragrance, massive compliment monster. I just got a peach tone out of it. And that's the other thing too, when it does begin to dry down, I get more of a peachy or white peach sort of uh, scent profile to it. There's something alluring. There's something very sensual in this particular fragrance. It is an absolute monster when it comes to its projection, when it comes to its sillage. I get a very either high or a very confident moderate and it's 20 plus hours on skin, no problems at all. So let me talk about the bottle. I mentioned earlier that Mo is the creative genius. He's uh, behind the whole brand. He's also behind each of the designs, all the different concepts, obviously the scent themselves. In this case here, this is part of the diamond collection. Almas in Arabic means diamond, but I wanna point out this circle right here. If you turn the bottle, you can see that in fact, it's a moon transforming into a crescent moon, etc., etc. Mo mentions that a diamond is created both through time and pressure in the earth. It requires both of these elements. And that's what the moons are representing, the passing of time. I also love that this inscription here is actually a poem. And the poem reflects the diamond. The seasons and their times and pressures and their effects bear diamonds as their fruit. Big recommendation, gorgeous on skin. I love that on card, I'm getting a fruity tome on skin. I get these wonderful, luscious, luscious fruits. I just feel like, again, this basket's being offered to me. Just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Again, boys, don't be afraid. Gorgeous fragrance, a statement maker when it comes to a beautiful going out as a gourmand fragrance on a date night, things of that nature, but a being almas will hit the spot. Okay, next one. This is Lamar. Now, before you spray, I'd love you to hear me out first. What does Lamar mean? In Arabic, it's liquid gold. And you can tell from the beautiful design and color of this bottle. But what does it smell like? I had an opportunity to go to Turkey. Whilst there, we did a number of different tours. And the tour guide shared about the Ottoman imperial harems and what they were like. Sometimes we have a misconception that the harems were just slaves, but in fact, it was wives, slaves, concubines, and sometimes even because the Ottoman Empire was so huge, it covered a lot of the European continent, that nobles would send their daughters there. They would get an education. They were in a safe place when it comes to the actual harem itself. They were fed, they were bathed, they were well taken care of. There are these incredible imagery now, whether it's true or not, because it was a forbidden place, a lot of this is just creative interpretation, but you see this sense of frivolity. There was um, the imagination that everybody was running around naked. There was all these different food and spices and this color that existed in this place. Okay, I'd love you to spray now Lamar. For me, when I first smelt this, it took me to Turkey. It took me to my imagination of what the harem would smell like. The opulence, the decadence, the sensuality, the fruits, the spices. As it begins to dry down, the rose. There's this beautiful balance, this beautiful interplay between this very vibrant, very juicy, uh, 
almost green-like pineapple in that opening, and that's what you're detecting right now. As it begins to dry down, you'll get this beautiful, seductive rose. There are two roses in the heart, one being Turkish and the other one being Bulgarian. It is opulent. This fragrance here, this was my first Kajal. The moment that I sprayed this, I was whisked away. I was taken on a ride when it comes to this fragrance. If you love the scent profile to this, I'd love you to spray it on skin. Let me warn you now, it's 20 hours without any problems at all. This fragrance here has incredible longevity, sillage and projection in the high to super high to just everybody knows that you are wearing Lamar. I love smelling it on card, but on skin, it is glorious. So many different things are happening. It's a wonderful, olfactory, and joyous ride. Cardamom, coriander, these spicy notes that come through the fragrance. I'd love you to compare. Smell forest. I mentioned how it has spicy woods when it dries down. Your card should have dried down, or if you've got it on skin, smell that. You can just detect those spicy notes in the background there the nutmeg, that coriander. Now, Lamar. I feel like it takes spices on a whole different drive. That cardamom and coriander mixed in with that juicy pineapple and rose. Gorgeous. For me, this is Sandra. Originally, I bought this fragrance for myself. Sandra, my wife, fell in love with this and, well, claimed it as her own, essentially. I smell this in the air and I, well, I smelled it before and I sprayed it on card. I conjure her, I can see her. And again, this fragrance is going through walls. It, I can, you know, her presence is everywhere around me. I'm always impressed by the fragrance because it does so much. There's a lot going on and, and I'm, I'm reluctant to spray on skin because I want to spray it something else. Once this is on, nothing else will uh, we'll be able to compete against it. I love also that the juicy pineapple comes forward, but then pulls itself back. So you get at, at, at moments a juicy think of an Asian pineapple. There's no uh, acidic nature to an Asian pineapple. It's sweet, it's juicy, it's full bodied. And that's what I get here. But then it pulls itself back and reminds me of like a green acidic pineapple. In amongst all this, that rose and that rose constantly comes in and comes out almost like a wave. It, it is a gloriously complex fragrance. Now, I did mention that my wife has adopted this as her fragrance. However, my son, who's a 26-year-old man, he loves Lamar. One day, I felt that I was smelling this fragrance in stereo. Sandra, that was her fragrance for the day, but I didn't realize that my son had done the same. No matter where I went in the house, no matter where I went outside, I'm smelling Lamar. I'm, to the point where I'm thinking, it, it, it almost felt like one of those uh, scent uh, diffuses and, the, and it was diffusing all around from the inside to the outside of my house. For me, a gorgeous statement maker and in my imagination, it brings to life the harem and these, <laughs> the opulence, the decadence, the sensuality that would have existed in a place like that. Now, one that I adore, I love the hub. I love the hub. I need to point out the lids on these two here. As you can see, they both mirror each other, essentially. These two here also mirror each other. This is part of the diamond collection, and these two are part of the gold collection. As I mentioned, Lamar, liquid gold. Dahab means gold in Arabic. Dahab is also a name that is given to a girl. And when you give the Dahab name, you're basically saying she is the golden child. The attention to detail that Mo has instilled in all the fragrances. If you look at the lid, all around in Arabic are different words to represent gold. So I don't speak Arabic and I can't read it, but there is a Dahab there, there is a Lama there, and it also gives me the impression that these are the future fragrances that are part of this collection in time. Now, Let's explore this baby. The hub was ahead of its time. Second release for the house, 2014. And yet the seeds for its future successes all lie here. Beautiful fruity tones on that opening. These wonderful spices and these supple woods are all found in these different parts across the house now and across all the big hitters that have been successful for the house. I always find it interesting. I'd love you to spray. 
I find it interesting that sometimes we may come across things in our lives. We don't even see it in front of us. And it's only in retrospect, as we look backwards, we're like, oh, wow, that was actually there. Believe it or not, there's a photo. I was crazy in love as a 16 year old with this young lady also, obviously a 16 year old. I took a photo of her. Now, this is back in the days, you know, you had to, it's all film, you had to get it developed. And only when I got the, the, uh, the photo that I saw, and I realize this now, I found this photo recently, that in the corner is this young lady trying to get out of the shot. Who happens to be that young lady? But my wife. I was taking a photo of this young lady and yet my wife was also in that shot trying to get out of it. Crazy. Go back to the hub. Actually, before I say any more, please put it on skin. I, I know that you're gonna, oh no, but I've already put all the others. I find that if, and again, if you're alone at home, pull down your pants, <laughs> it sounds weird, but spray in your legs, that's what I'm trying to say. Spray in your, uh, yeah, spray in your legs. Uh, but this needs to go on skin. I'm glad that I sprayed on card because we're going to do a little bit of comparison. But this on skin, forget about it. This on skin is a whole new experience. The beautiful keynotes of the fragrance is there, but on skin, you're getting so much more dance. So many more things are actually happening. <laughs> so on skin, I detect this wonderful vibrant green apple, juicy. I mean, you're literally crunching. You can hear the crunch on this thing, but blend it in with this wonderful passion fruit. It's divine. On card, a little bit flat. So again, I recommend find some skin, put it on, experience what this fragrance is all about. It has this beautiful dry spiciness to it. Again, coriander is in fire. It. The, the woody aromatics in this fragrance is just next level. Coriander's in this fragrance too. But the fruits, that coriander, the, the, the coriander spiciness, and then that beautiful patchouli that's in the base is just, it's a knockout of the park. This is comfortably unisex. This is easy for a man to wear. This is easy for a woman to wear. This is, and I know that originally it was a bit more pitched to a female audience, but gentlemen, this is a gorgeous fragrance for a man to wear. The fruity tones have come down. I purposely sprayed it here because I want to compare the two. So if you've sprayed it on skin Almas or if you've got it on card, detect that one first. That raspberry peachiness to it. Definitely a lot softer, definitely a lot creamier. A little bit more of that vanilla coming through. And now the hub. Oh my gosh. This dryness, this beautiful fruit tones, that passion fruit that's there. But that patchouli is already coming through. That patchouli dryness is just, just gorgeous. I love the evolution on this fragrance, the way it opens up. The summer fruits, that crispy green apple that just pops out alongside that beautiful, beautiful passion fruit. It then migrates to like a spicy amber. The fruit tones are still there, but have come down a bit. Finally settles to a dry, fruity wood fragrance. The amber tones have come down. The spiciness does come forward and there is a beautiful woody base. That musty patchouli is magical. 10 plus hours without a problem. My sillage and projection, both in a very confident, moderate, everyone around me is detecting this fragrance. And as you can see, this fragrance is a big hitter. I have a library system within my office, family, and also my editors can borrow. And as you can see, this fragrance has been hit hard. It is a big, big favorite. And as I mentioned before, if you have room, I would recommend you put it on skin. The fragrance and its evolution, its movement, the way that it dances is spectacular. I did a comparison with the Hub and Almas, those fruity tones that are in there, and the complete difference. The Hub, very dry fruit notes, and then Almas, that beautiful milky, creamy vanilla fruit tones. Now the Hub and Lamar. I love Lamar's spiciness, and I'm guessing you're detecting now that rose coming through that very clear rose, but yet it's that beautiful pineapple still present, still moving through it. Compare that to Dahab now. Oh, mama. 
Lamar still has the vibrancy of the fruit, whereas the Hav has now got this more ambery, spicy component. The wood's coming through, that patchouli, but that touch of that passion fruit. To think that this was released in 2014, Lamar was released in 2020, and yet they, they share some similar DNA. Spectacular. Comfortably, you can see the gold collection, they support each other, very similar in style, but two very separate fragrances. Last one. Best to last. This is the hidden gem. This is Masa. I love aquatic fragrances. I love herbal fragrances. I love musky fragrances. My skin, when it comes to grabbing a musk, changes it, does something completely different. I'd love you to spray. Okay, so sorry to do this to you. I'd love you to spray on skin. This is another one. Actually, spray on skin, but also spray on card. I'm gonna spray on card first. And now, skin. I love this fragrance. That moment, the fragrance opens up. This is wild. Now, a lot of people, are, from what I've noticed, I'm not talking about masa. Don't know why. Well, actually, I think maybe I do know why. Smell on card. You get this very subtle fruit note, but then there's an unusual fizziness to it, like this bitter, slightly herbal, very different scent profile. The fruit note, almost like it comes in, but then boom, it vanishes away, and yet it comes back. All right, now smell this on your skin. Tell me that there is more of this herbal green. It almost it almost amplifies that herbal zinginess that I was saying before, that fizziness. So on that opening, it has a constructed fantasy note. It's a plum. It's meant to be a sour, sweet plum. And I find that that the sweetness, the sour sort of come in and come out, they, they, they interchange with each other. There's also a zesty grapefruit. And again, another note where I find that grapefruit can either be uh, sweet, but it also can be slightly zingy and bitter. And then there's ginger. Now, those three combinations for me give this the most unusual, the most appealing scent profile from this entire collection. The others I'm familiar with. I'm like, the moment the fragrance opens, I'm like, I oh, guess I know this. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Whereas Masa, when I first experienced it, really like, I, I stood up to attention, like, what is going on here? And again, I go back on card. And I think this is probably why it has remained a bit of a hidden gem. People spray it on card. They smell and they, I'm not really sure what's happening here. And they move on. I insist. Please, spray it on skin. This is one of the most divine fragrances within the collection. The evolution, the movement, the olfactory dance that this fragrance has is like none other. This is the other reason why I wanted you to spray on skin because for me, the experience that I have is very different to others. And I'd love you to see, is this, are you matched with me or are you going in a different direction? I'll explain more. When it opens, it does have a very fizzy fruit component to it. As I explained before, that sweet, sour, the ginger, has, is it sweet, is it, is it here, is it there? It's always enticing. For me, I always find it very alluring. It does move to a herbal aquatic scent. There is a aquatic accord in that, so there is a little bit of that saltiness from that, that sea air. So when it does dry down, for me, I get a very musky tone to it. I spray it on my editors, young ladies within the office. And both of them, it goes actually fruity, spicy. In the base, there are things like guayac wood and vetiver. On me, I get a real musky tone. Whereas on the young ladies, to the point where one of my editors, I asked her, do you mind if I smell the fragrance again? Gave me her hand, I smelt it. I'm like, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm masa. Which one is masa? And she's like, oh, and it sort of had her perplexed for a minute there. She's like, that is masa, that's masa. And I remember comparing her scent profile versus me, completely different. So I find that maybe it could be my musky tones, 
my masculine energy that's transforming the fragrance when it comes down into the dry down. One thing that is for certain, what you smelling on the card is not what you'll experience when you put it on skin. For those who are familiar with the fragrance Mega Mare, I feel like this is its more pleasant cousin. So Mega Mare, very similar. It starts off with this vibrance, this sort of uh, happiness, and then it goes into this very deep, algae, musky place. Never happens here with Masa. For me, as I mentioned, it does go into a musky place, but those sea salt, herbal, that wild and beautiful fruit note at the beginning stays throughout the fragrance. I love that it becomes a dance. The notes come in and go out, different things emerge. I get the ginger, then I get the musk, then I get these beautiful herbal notes and I get the aquatic. This whole experience is phenomenal. For me, this is a gorgeous summertime fragrance, aquatic, happy marine style. It works really well in winter. And I'm gonna say it's those Beautiful bass notes, the guaiac wood, the cedar wood, the amber that's in the bass, plays beautifully in a cool weather landscape. For me, Masa needs to be experienced, a hidden gem. I know that, and I think what happens is sometimes when there are so many beautiful big hitters within the house, that even though this is gorgeous, it just gets eclipsed by these other big names or these ones that come out of the gate so beautifully. Masa does require a little bit more time from you. It does require that you test on skin, but if you give it a chance, you'll find that this one here is absolute, just pure magic. Boom, there it is. Five incredible fragrances from the House of Kajal. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I mean, this collection here, you can comfortably, <laughs> you can comfortably own each one of these and each of them tell their own particular story. You can use them at different times of the year for different occasions. Let me just say, if you go on a date, Dahab, Bada Bing, or even Almas, people will be falling in love all around you. Now, if you've enjoyed any of these fragrances, you can get a 10% discount. Jump on the Kajal website, use the code NFC. In most cases, you'll find that delivery is free anywhere around the world. I hope you enjoyed that discovery series on all things Kajal. I do look forward to your comments and tell me how you went. Anything that you would like me to add, let me know. Thanks everyone, we'll see you guys all on the next episode.